الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمدك يا مولانا حمدا كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده ربي لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وقائدنا وأستاذنا ومعلمنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله الطاهرين وصحابته الميامين وعلى كل من اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين أما بعد عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي المقصرة أولا بتقوى الله سبحانه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون جعلني الله وإياكم من عباده المتقين الفائزين الذاكرين آمين اللهم آمين All you who believe do not let death approach you except in the state of taqwa, state of piety and righteousness We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those whom live and die upon taqwa آمين اللهم آمين Beloved brothers and respected sisters the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam would sit among his Sahaba every day after Fajr. And in many times the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam would ask the Sahaba, did any one see a dream? And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam will take it upon himself to interpret that dream. One day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam conducts this halaqa and says to his Sahaba that I had a dream last night. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam will not take it upon himself to interpret his dream for the dreams of the Anbiya is a form of wahi, a form of revelation. It doesn't need interpretation, as is. And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I had a dream that I was performing Umrah, going around the Kaaba, being followed by the Sahaba, the Sahaba that were there, Ridwanullahi Alayhim Ajma'een. And after that, we trimmed our hair and shaved. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then reveals an ayah to confirm that dream, that this is wahi, this is revelation. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms it in Surah Al-Fatih, the chapter of the opening. لَقَدْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَهُ الرُّؤْيَا بِالْحَقِّ مُؤَكِّدًا لِرُؤْيَةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه رأى نفسه والصحابة الكرام يطوفون حول البيت فأقر الله تلك الرؤية بقوله لقد صدق الله رسوله الرؤيا بالحق that Allah has made true the dream of his prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم and then Allah makes a promise لَتَدْخُلُنَّ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامَ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِنِيمٌ that all of you shall enter the sacred land in peace and in tranquility. 
This was a promise that was made by Allah to the Sahaba. And when the Sahaba heard that news, they were overwhelmed with joy that now Allah has promised us to return back to Mecca. They were taken out of Mecca. They were stripped from their wealth. They were pushed away from their families. And they had, subhanAllah, no hope to return back to Mecca, not knowing what will happen. How easy will this journey be? So much difficulties down the line. And now Allah is promising them and the Prophet wasallam that they shall enter into Mecca in complete safety. The Prophet wasallam then tells the Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhim to prepare. And everyone is so excited and everyone begins to prepare themselves. Over a thousand people prepared themselves at that moment. And they all embarked in that journey, heading towards Mecca to perform Umrah. Under the leadership of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam begins his journey and finds out that the people of Quraysh began to prepare. The Meccans now have gathered its people and sent out its army. To make sure that the Prophet ﷺ does not enter Mecca. And this is where the Treaty of Hudaybiyah takes place. As this Umrah begins in the sixth year of Al Hijrah. And the Prophet ﷺ going in a thousand strong. And he is approached by the leadership of Mecca, where now he is deprived, pushed back from entering Mecca. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now begins to negotiate with the people of Mecca. And it was a very difficult negotiation. And there were many compromises that were made because he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a vision. There was an ultimate goal. It's not always getting what you want. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then tells the sahaba, let's all go back to Medina now. The Sahaba, their hearts were filled with hope, with excitement to return back to Mecca. It was a sign of victory. Allah answered their prayers and gave them this answer in a form of wahi and a promise that was made. And now they're told, go back. And they were so hurt by that command, the order that was given by the Prophet ﷺ when he told them to get up and shave and trim their hair. Not one Sahabi stood up. Could you imagine how difficult it is? Wallahi, if any of one of you got up and made an announcement after Jumu'ah and told people, can you please no one leave and everyone leave. Imagine how much of a heartbreak that will be. So difficult. Or you say something and no one responds to you. And there's no going back and forth. No one is being receptive to your message. Wallahi, it causes a major heartbreak. And the Prophet of Allah then repeats himself to make sure that his orders were clearly heard. And he tells the Sahaba, get up, trim, or shave your hair. And not even one Sahabi gets up. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so shook by this that he walked into his house or walked into his tent fearing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring about destruction to the ummah. That he has ordered them and they disobeyed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in his order. And this is where Umm Salama gives her beautiful consultation and she tells the Prophet, you shave first and everyone will follow along. And he did that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and everyone followed along. Even though the Prophet ﷺ was told by Allah that he shall enter Mecca وسلم, he experienced heartbreak. And many people thought at that moment that this may have been a failure. But the Prophet ﷺ knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Hakim, divine wisdom. Whatever Allah decrees, Whatever Allah wants, at that moment it did not make sense. 
The Prophet was not excited to go back to Medina. He himself wanted to perform the Umrah and he gave out a promise. But the Prophet ﷺ never hesitated for a moment, never thought for a slight second to give up ﷺ. Never gave up. And Allah was directing the Prophet ﷺ. And it wasn't going according to his plan. But he never gave up. At that moment, some Sahaba doubted the process. Some Sahaba didn't know what was happening. Some Sahaba were questioning. The Munafiqun capitalized on that and were spreading rumors and accusations. But the Prophet ﷺ never lost hope. Can you imagine how difficult it is to believe that you are divinely directed to where you need to go? And you're still not seeing the results that you expect. You and I make daily decisions not through divine revelation. And once we experience a setback, we are heartbroken. What happened? I tried my best. I thought Allah was going to respond to my dua. The Prophet ﷺ was directed by Allah. And he ﷺ would not see the results that many of us would expect. ﷺ. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the one that told the Prophet ﷺ to perform hijrah. When he came to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu in the authentic hadith, he said, Ya Abu Bakr, inna Allah qad adhina li bil hijrah. That Allah has given me permission to perform hijrah. So even his hijrah was wahi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we know in history that his hijrah was delayed. The sahaba went before the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his hijrah was delayed. So you would think that this delay happened to facilitate the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as hijrah and to make sure that it is so easy, so comfortable just to get from point A to point B. You've suffered enough, O Muhammad. And he leaves Mecca sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the leaders of Quraysh are next to his doorstep. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows him to go through that trial. And then he is the most wanted sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr and siddiq Both of them become the most wanted. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passes that. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes into the cave of Thawr. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was filled with fear that what will happen to the Prophet, not for himself radiallahu anhu, what will happen to the Prophet of Allah? What will happen if they find the Prophet? And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stays there for some time. And then he comes down to find Suraq ibn Malik radiallahu anhu chasing. Subhanallah, challenge after challenge after challenge. And even though this was divine, this journey was given to him by Allah, there were still obstacles down the line. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would always respond to that with so much faith. With so much certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will facilitate his affairs. It's not the way we want it to happen, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings about it. And this was the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He never allowed setbacks, setbacks, or a few failures here and there to push him back sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would always find a way to turn something negative into positive. And to place his trust in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then to move on. Subhanallah, when the Sahaba in Uhud, they were so hurt. Because what happened in Badr? Didn't the angels come down and participate in Badr? Jibreel alayhi salam was there. Divine assistance was there. And the Sahaba were given victory. And this news spread all over the Arabian Peninsula of how victorious they were. And they come into Uhud with a similar mindset that this is nothing. Now we're prepared. We're far more prepared than Badr. And then what happens? A massacre takes place. And many Sahaba were heartbroken. And Uhud was a defeat. Many people don't like to say that, but Uhud was a defeat. And Quraysh was so excited. And the Sahaba were heartbroken. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals ayat that we continue to recite. وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا 
wa antumul a'laun in kuntum mu'min do not be weakened do not be taken by grief or sadness you will always have the upper hand isn't that what they expected the victory to be the upper hand but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise but subhanallah once they heard that their hearts were filled with hope and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself was the rasul of hope so subhanallah as you flip the pages of our seerah and you read books of seerah you realize that the sahaba were not getting what they wanted but they never lost hope in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there were failures here and there but that never determined the outcome failing here and there is part of dunya there's no such thing as 100% you plan you fail you plan you fail but what a muslim does is that they allow this failure subhanallah to be filtered and turned into something positive where it becomes a source of motivation there is no room for giving up in islam failure is justified giving up is not justified in the life of a person the idea that you give up on a community on your family on yourself it can be on your physical well-being your mental well-being your health whatever it may be al yas la mahalla there is no place of giving up in islam whatsoever and this is why they say balasa or ablasa is taken from the word yaisa which is the name of shaitan that he was given that name because he gave up he gave up on allah's mercy he gave up to seek forgiveness and he did not seek it and because of that he was kicked out of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa lakum fastaghfiruhu fa yafuz al mustaghfir الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله الطاهرين وبعد brothers and sisters many studies were conducted and we learned that the third week of the first month is the most depressing week so after the 21st of the first month the most depressing week because that's when people begin to give up It's not that they're trying to realign, to revision, to revisit. They give up on whatever New Year resolutions they set in mind. They get closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They were strong for the first three weeks, and then they begin to lack. They've set in their mind that, Insha Allah, I will be a better family member, a better parent, a better child, a better sibling, a better spouse. And after three weeks, they experience so much consumption. and many people give up after 3 weeks and we are given no promises and the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in quraish in makkah for over 13 years did not see any change any victory but he was able to capture the heart and in medina later on he was able to see the fruits of his amal sallallahu alaihi wasallam even though he was divinely guided and we have many of us in the time where everything is prime everything is quick everything is express we expect everything to easily change and this is when islam comes in to remind people what it means to make dua that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you and i to achieve our goal it also reminds you and i that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says yustajabu li ahadikum ma lam yastajil لا يقول دعوت ودعوت فلم يستجب لي when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam speaks about prayers he says some of us reach a point where we say i made dua and i made dua and nothing changed there was no response he said that's not a life of a mu'min everything takes time everything takes time and subhanallah part of the process of growth is to experience failures But subhanallah a mu'min continues to work and to work and to have hope in Allah and to make dua. And subhanallah one critical point that we may dismiss in this journey after making these new year resolutions is that we become so impatient. Even people that have decided to work out every single day or to have some family 
or quality time, people are not seeing any results and due to that they give up. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ was given the glad tidings and Allah gave the Prophet ﷺ those glad tidings for those whom are patient. Those whom are patient. Those whom are seeking change must be patient. And he ﷺ is the greatest example. And the idea is that we shouldn't rush to experience change. If people have made a new year resolution to study better, to function better, to serve better, and then you and I experience these pushbacks, even though we are sincere, we're doing it for Allah. But there will always be pushbacks to bring out the best in us. And bi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through that sincerity, through that understanding, we allow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to intervene and to give you and I that patience, that understanding of mujahada. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا It is only those whom engage in jihad, whom strive in the path of Allah, whom will experience Allah's guidance through these difficult decisions and this journey to Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the motivation, the power, the determination that we need that allows us to serve better, to give better, understand better, listen better, function better, love our families, our communities, our deen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be there for us in times where we may be down, where we may be distressed, where we may be sad. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uplift us and to allow us to function through His hidayah. Ameen Allahumma. Ameen Allah wa sallu wa sallimu ala man ba'athahu Allahu rahmatan lil alameen. حيث أمرتم بالصلاة والسلام عليه فقال عز من قائل إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم فصل وسلم وزد وبارك عليه وعلى أصحابه الأخيار وعلى آله الأطهار وصحابته الأخيار وعلى كل من اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته واقتفى تره إلى يوم الدين الله منصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين وعلى فضلك راية الحق والدين انصر عبادك المستضعفين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين كلهم حافظا وناصرا ويدا ومعينا خلص بعينك التي لا تنام اغفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وقوموا إلى صلاتك ورحمكم الله وأقم الصلاة